This is the Mead LX10 Smith Cassegrain Telescope. It's an older telescope and if you've watched any of my other videos on astronomy and telescopes you know that I've had this uh, scope for well over 20 years, uh, maybe longer ago than that, the mid-90s anyway. One of the nice things about this particular telescope is that it has the same optics as the LX200, which was kind of the premium uh, Mead amateur telescope of the uh, of the 90s, and it's still being sold today, though it's been considerably upgraded. So I'd like to talk a little bit about this uh, uh, telescope and why I like it. It's been very, very uh, reliable. Uh, obviously, it's still around, and it's certainly in better shape for its age than I am for mine. But the uh, I've added some things to this over the years, and I'd like to talk about those as well. But basically, this is a little bit of a, of a review, although I don't think they still make the LX-10, but they are still available. But if you're looking for a telescope that has really good optics, at least for an amateur, uh, for an amateur astronomer, and didn't cost that much. I paid less than $1,000 for this back in the 90s. Uh, though I have added some, some uh, things to it uh, since then. So uh, let me get started by talking about the things that I've added to the LX-10 and why I added those. The LX-10 comes with a manual adjustment for the, uh, it's right there, you may be able to see it in the, right in the center, that manual adjustment for declination. I have added a motor that you see right there that drives, using that uh, gear that you see up there on top, that drives the declination axis and the reason for that is that allows you to make corrections to the declination using the hand controller instead of having to fumble around in the dark and try and find that little knob. It's been very useful and uh, is one of the additions that I have made to this telescope. Another addition that I've made is this power supply. And I'll show you uh, where it connects in a, in a second. Uh, it is basically just a 12 volt power supply. Let me see if I can zoom in on, well, turn it around so you can read it. It's an AC adapter. This particular one is regulated 12 volts at 2 amps. And what I've done is added a long extension with a uh, barrel connector. If you're familiar with electronics, this will all seem uh, second nature to you, but basically that's a positive center conductor and it's 12 volts and I recommend if you are going to uh, add your own adapter you use a regulated one. This works fine with the LX10, 12 volts at 2 amps. You don't need 2 amps, but I don't know exactly what you do need. There is a video by W2AEW, I'm sorry I just told you wrong, by El Paso Tube Amps uh, David, who uh, has an LX200, and he talked about adding a power supply to that. This scope and the LX200 were essentially the same scope back in the day, except this does not have the go-to capability of the LX200. So I am betting that this power supply would work with an LX200 as well. But at any rate, you might want to look over at his channel. It's called El Paso Tube Amps. I have plugged in the power supply, you may see it over there in the wall, and the cable coming under here, and this is a little hard to see because of the way this uh, is mounted, but it plugs in back here, you can see my finger, and next to it is the connection to the declination motors that may or may not be visible, and then the hand controller, which is this item. So what I'm going to do is put the camera up near the hand controller so you can hear and as I press the declination and the right ascension. Now you may notice that 
now the right ascension motor is not running, if I turn loose of this knob or this button, it begins moving in sidereal time. That is the, the speed at which the uh, sky appears to turn as the earth actually turns. And that is the motor drive in this uh, telescope. Now this is not a go-to telescope, but it does have a motor drive that will track objects across the sky. And that's one of the things that I really like about the LX-10 is its mount. So let's take a look at that. The LX-10 is mounted on what is called an equatorial or polar mount. In other words, the, the axis of the, uh, that the uh, motor drives around the telescope in right ascension is set at the angle of my latitude, which is around 45 degrees here, if I remember right. I said it some time ago, and by the way, that's, that's set down here on this, uh, using these, you loosen these screws and readjust it. By the way, I suggest that uh, before you do that, you take the telescope off of the mount, because when you take, when you loosen those screws, the, assembly will try to slam down and with the heavy weight of the telescope on it. So if you're adjusting this yourself, be sure you read your instruction manual. But the important thing is try to minimize the weight or at least be very prepared for the weight when you try to adjust this. Uh, basically, it's the angle of the of north, true north, or of the, the uh, uh, perpendicular to the celestial equator. Call it Polaris. It's not actually Polaris, but it's close to where the North Star is. The, the This fork points to the North Star, and it's oriented right now at about, uh, in this case, at North. But uh, that's just a... <laughs> That's just a fluke. I didn't really intend to do that, but it turns out it is oriented about north. And then the motor drive drives this uh, fork and turns like this, causing the telescope to move in, uh, in synchronization with the sky. So that is the mount. Sometimes this kind of a mount is called a wedge mount or, or just a wedge. Sometimes it's called an equatorial mount. I think in some telescopes there is a, what's called a German mount that's very similar to this. But at any rate, that's, uh, that is one of the things that came with the telescope. And of course the tripod also uh, was, a part, was, one of the, was part of the original purchase. So uh, the, the next thing I'd like to do is talk about the Magellan One computer that I added. So let's take a look at that. Over here, you can see a little box labeled Mead Magellan One. That is an addition to this telescope that uh, I installed based on Mead's instructions, along with encoders. Now the encoders are actually, one of the encoders is on the declination, which you may remember is over here, the declination motor. So one of the encoders reads out the declination and the other one reads out the right ascension. That is how far this, this uh, fork has rotated. Now those encoders supply information to a, a hand box that plugs in to this, this box right here. So let me show you that uh, Magellan 1 and how what it looks like when it's turned on. This is the Mead Magellan 1 telescope computer system. It plugs in via that cable that you see there to the uh, the Magellan 1 interface, which is where the encoder information is read out of the telescope, onto this uh, box. So let me turn that on. And by the way, 
you may or may not notice that the telescope itself is not powered on right now because this is in, uh, separately powered by batteries. So I'm just going to show you the basics of the uh, Magellan 1, just how it starts up. Turn it on and let me see if I can get pretty good. Uh, okay, there. Well, it comes up with a little uh, flash screen and then it says uh, object, library, and align. Basically what you do, and I won't go through the process here, is you set the Magellan 1 uh, in the align mode. Then you move the telescope. You start it out in pointed at Polaris, uh, that is polar aligned. And you can do that with all the power turned off and so on. Once you have it polar aligned, you uh, turn on the Magellan 1 and then you also turn on the telescope power and put it in the align mode. It will then walk you through uh, a series of steps to find objects in the sky, primarily bright stars, that you can use to align the telescope. And remember what's really happening here. All that's really happening is you get the star the alignment star centered in the telescope and then you tell the Magellan 1 that okay I have Vega for example in the middle of the telescope it then reads out the encoders the right ascension and the declination encoders those are just raw numbers and puts them in its uh, memory then you move to another star let's say Rigel and you then uh, tell the Magellan by pressing buttons that I'm now centered on Rigel. It now uh, also records the uh, readings for the encoders at that point in the sky. Then from that information it can calculate the right ascension and declination of virtually any place in the sky. And so from that point forward, the way this works is you enter either the object you want or the exact uh, right ascension and declination that you're looking for. And then the Magellan tells you how close you are. So as you move the telescope, and remember this is not a go-to scope, so you have to do this manually. As you manually move the scope to the, that point in the star, uh, in the sky, the Magellan 1 will will tell you that okay you're at this place right ascension and declination and you keep moving it until eventually the error goes to zero in which case you are now pointing at the object or in the case of a simple right ascension and declination the point in the sky that you are looking for so that's how the Magellan 1 works let me uh, kind of close all this out by talking about why I like the LX-10. I like this telescope especially because it has the equatorial mount which makes it ideal for astrophotography though I don't do that but a scope that works well for astrophotography is also very good for visual use because it means that the object you're looking at stays in the in the eyepiece for very long periods of time. There's very little error in this uh, telescope. Second, as I pointed out, the optics in this are really great. They uh, are some of the best 8-inch uh, Smith-Cassegrain optics, at least from that period of time. Now, there are some that are better, but they're a lot more expensive. So the optics are excellent. Also, you may notice, and I think I've talked about this in a previous video, this has a two-inch uh, mirror that I have added, and that allows you to use two-inch eyepieces, which once again, for visual purposes, is uh, uh, really, really enhances the view. An item that I have since added that uh, you see here is this uh, 8 by 50 finder scope, Originally, the uh, scope that came on this telescope was a 6x30. Let me show you that. 
This is the 6x30 that came on the Mead. I have mounted it on my Celestron 8SE because I really like having a, a real finder scope. The, uh, the little laser sight that comes with these uh, scopes uh, just doesn't hack it for me. But at any rate, this is the, uh, the scope, the finder scope that came with that uh, Mead LX10. Finally, the thing that uh, one of the things that I really like about the LX10 is it's very sturdy. It comes with a true fork mount. I've shown you this before, but the uh, it has a fork that holds the uh, the optical tube on both sides. Unlike the scopes like the Celestron that only hold it on one side, that makes the scope itself much more stable. The tripod is a very heavy duty tripod and the weight of the LX10 and that tripod is sufficient to maintain stability if you use cushioning pads like this. Now I use this scope most on a deck. It's a very well built deck. In fact I helped uh, design it when, when we added it to this house and I made sure that we used 6 by 6s in many of the places that most deck builders would use 2 by 6s or 2 by 8s uh, I use 6 by 6s so it's very solidly built set on some very solid piers tied to the house so it doesn't shake nearly as much as the one at my old house did and that was one of the reasons that I built it this way is so it would hold a telescope like this and not move around so much as I walk or as the wind blows. But I still use these to minimize the vibration. But overall the LX10 is a very solid scope. It's not state-of-the-art. It's a push-to scope. So you still you still have to manually move the uh, the optical tube and the mechanism to point to the place in the sky that you want to uh, to look at. But having the Magellan computer system really makes that an easy an easy job. I would like to show you an alignment on the Magellan one but unfortunately you can't really do that you can't really fake it. Uh, the only way you can get a successful alignment is to actually do it on real stars. At least that, that's the only way I've been able to figure it out. If you try to fake it it'll tell you all it'll, every time it'll say uh, you know error alignment. So uh, and I can only do that at night and quite frankly it's hard to show this kind of thing at night so I'm really trying to do all of this in the day. But that is my impression of the Mead LX10 with the better finder scope, with the 2 inch uh, mirror and, and lenses, with the equatorial mount and the Magellan 1 computer with the added encoders, uh, the declination motor, the power supply, I really love this telescope and I probably will continue to use it a lot. But in a future video, I do plan to talk about the Celestron 8SE, which I also am coming to know and love. And uh, I hope you'll look forward to that video as well. But in the meantime, have a nice day.